Oh, hey, I was just about to go make some compost tea. You wanna go along? Let's go. So I was just sitting out here thinking about compost and how much I love it. And I realized you might be wondering why make compost tea in the first place when I could just spread compost around my plants. And you know, there are a couple of benefits to compost tea. Um, in a process that normally takes months, uh, decomposition can be sped up pretty drastically by creating an ideal environment for the bacteria to live in. So just like if you're baking sourdough bread or uh, making kombucha or uh, brewing beer or something like that, <clears throat> you know, bacteria or yeast, they all need really similar environments. Uh, just kind of a steady temperature. Um, they need a food source. In this case, it would be the compost, obviously. Um, they need moisture, water, which should be clean. Um, city water or chlorinated water should be left out for 24 hours to allow that chlorine to evaporate before you try to uh, make tea with it. Um, and then lastly, um, oxygen. And so when you make compost tea, you're just pumping oxygen into this mixture and really just supercharging it. So you're taking what would normally happen in a compost pile and um, forcing it to happen super fast. So when you add that to your plants, you're adding a solution of um, fertilizer, which is, uh, you know, has all the benefits of regular compost. It's an organic fertilizer. It's, um, it's decomposed, doesn't have any chemicals or additives to it, uh, but it's much more efficient for the plants to absorb because it's already broken down and it's in a state that, that the plants can use to absorb it. Uh, the results of one study that I read said that a single teaspoon of compost tea had in the billions something like two billion more active um, living microbes trillion three hundred million billion uh, beneficial microbes in in the tea than just in the straight compost and that's all going right into the soil and not only feeding the plant but continuing to break down um, organic matter that's in the soil and create more fertilizer more food for the plants all right and to harvest some worm castings and compost first we're going to go over to the rabbit hutch And of course, we have to say hi to all of our new baby bunnies here. And my container. Now for containers, you can use all kinds of things. I've used garbage cans uh, for a larger batch. For a whole season, I used a 35 gallon garbage can. You could use a five gallon bucket or an old Rubbermaid bin like this one. Yeah, we've got lots of red worms underneath the rabbit hutch. So we'll get a few scoops of this and then we'll go over to the compost pile. And when you go to the compost pile, first you gotta say hi to all the little meat chips. So taking a look at the compost, you can see it's partially decomposed. There's a lot of hay in there, uh, a little bit of manure. This compost sits out all year round. We water it down, it gets rained on, gets, gets stirred up. And there, I just saw a few little red worms in there, meaning, uh, there we go, there's a couple of them. I mean, they're doing a good job of turning that into castings and soil, so that's going to be perfect for our tea. So just a couple scoops of that, and we're ready to add water. Well, if you do any kind of farming, you know you don't have the time to worry about precise measurements when it comes to composting and uh, fertilizing and things like that. You just need the basics, which are your food source, your compost, or your worm castings. You need fresh water. You need the right temperature, which is compost should be made at between 65 degrees and 75 degrees, and then oxygen, which we're gonna get to in just a minute. Um, I, I don't worry about weighing out the compost or measuring it uh, or, or measuring out my water because that's going to affect um, the outcome so slightly that it's, it's not worth wasting the time. We just wanna make a good product 
do it regularly, which we add um, compost tea to our garden and our orchard and our flowers and everything about once a week during the growing season. I'm a big fan of teaching the kids to do farm chores. If you have teenagers or uh, trustworthy kids, this is a great chore for them. It's easy, kind of fun, and teaches you about the life cycle and the plant cycle and nutrition. Now, I don't actually brew the compost tea outside like this. This is for demonstration purposes only. I do it inside the garage where it's locked away. We have a one-year-old and we wouldn't want her to play with the bucket and fall in. There's such a high drowning risk. So I also use a container like this that has these latches on the sides and then I keep heavy bags of gray on top. Okay, you've got your compost and your water. Now we're gonna set up our aerator. We use an aquarium air pump like this, which we found at a secondhand store. You can get this at Petco. Uh, it's probably a 30 gallon air pump, some airline, and these air diffusers or bubblers which you put into your aquarium. These are bigger ones. I got these on Amazon. I think they were about five dollars. Having two of them and having a pump that has two outlets would allow me to do two containers at the same time. You could put one of these in each garbage can or two five gallon buckets. So now they're adding oxygen to the water, allowing that beneficial bacteria to multiply. And in about 48 hours, it's gonna be at peak, um, peak population and perfect for use on the garden. Important thing to note is once it's done, you want to use all of it. You don't want to save it. Once you take the oxygen out of the water, that bacteria is going to start to die off or go dormant. So once it's done, you could, you could use it after 24 hours, but I think 48 hours is ideal. <laughs> That's a sign of a, a lot of biological activity going on in there, a lot of fermentation. Uh, and that's good, that's what we want. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna dilute it uh, one to one mixture. So one part tea to one part fresh water. Um, if you don't dilute it, it can be damaging to your plants. It's a little bit too hot. You could also dilute it two to one, two, two parts water to one part tea if you want to make it go a little bit farther. But they find that uh, based on actual research, one-to-one uh, -one is the most efficient use of it. Yeah. If you want to see this next video, uh, me be up to it and about the weeds we're doing today. I cut them off with my knife, with my really potent knife. So, but I can't even know if I could see it. So, these, th my dad was walking on this stuff, and then uh, I didn't have much, so. Here's what this doing my mom's plant. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs> Cassie.